Hey everybody, and Tony here with a review of Mozart's Die Zauberflöte, which I saw at the Komische Oper Berlin. The conductor was Jordan de Souza. The production was done by Suzanne Andrade, Barry Kosky, with illustrations done by Paul Barrett, which in turn was based on their concept 1927. The assistant directors were Tobias Rybitsky and Werner Zawa. The sets and costumes were done by Esta Vialas. The dramaturgy was handled by Ulrich Lenz. The chorus master was David Cabellos, and the lights were handled by Diego Litz. I was really excited to see this production because I mainly saw a couple of clips of this set production on YouTube and was quite fascinated by the overall design and look. And after I saw this production of the Zauberflöte complete with an all-star cast, I have to say that this evening was certainly Grand. Going into the production, this basically takes place in the 1920s as opposed to the original ancient Egypt. And this is basically one huge homage to the silent films, whether they be from F.W. Murnau, Fritz Lang, Georges Méliès, Louis Buñuel, and even to some extent Tim Burton and Henry Selleck, this is basically one major homage from the dialogue which is basically used with text and the characters have to basically use either mimics and gestures to convey each dialogue to some of the styles and the overall look of this particular production and even some of the costumes. What I noticed about this production is that each of the characters move around on certain platforms, whether they be walking, running, hopping, jumping, or flying, and there is just a lot of great visual effects being used. On top of that, on top of that, the visuals are extremely eye-popping. It was a magnificent visual feast from beginning to end, and it's so well detailed. Every single detail just seems to burst with vivacity, color, and so much magnificence that I was left on the edge of my seat. The overall style, look, and feel of this particular production of the Zauberflöte was, in a way, a visual feast. And the costumes were also quite elegant. And here's another interesting tidbit about this version's Ein Mädchen oder Weibchen. This is basically a tamer version of Pink Elephants on Parade from Disney's Dumbo. And when I say a tamer version of Pink Elephants on Parade, it's not as nightmarish as it was in the Disney film, but it's a lot more surreal, yet actually quite pleasing to the eyes, as opposed to the utter mindfrag of Pink Elephants on Parade. And speaking of the instruments, the flute in this version is basically a fairy akin to Peter Pan's Tinkerbell, but a lot less bitchy. And the bells used by Papageno is basically a box. And once he opens the box, we see a row of dancers' legs, which are festively plump, who dance around as if though that they are producing music through their movements. Monostatos in this particular production is a huge homage to F.W. Murnau's Nosferatu, from the way his ears point out all the way up to his skin tone and all the way up to his costume, he certainly looks like a huge homage to Nosferatu, mostly because of the fact that Monostatos represents a certain nastiness to this character and a certain malice which makes him all the more present. And there were also some influences by Tim Burton, mostly because of how the characters look. One can definitely tell that with the white makeup and the black eyeshadow and of course all the dark colored costumes, much of these characters feel as though that they stepped out of a Tim Burton film. And speaking of Tim Burton, the Queen of the Night looked like a cross between the Other Mother's True Form from Coraline. Yes, I know that film was actually directed by Henry Selleck, but still, 
the overall gothic nature and the overall creepy nature that the other mother had certainly was implemented to this queen of the night to a monster out of some b-horror flick so she's basically that type of combination to also show that she is not only powerful but really evil even more so this production seems to have a lot of fun by even putting in some text with the three ladies the first lady is known as mrs schwarz the second lady is known as madame klatsch and the third lady is known as frau tratsch which i thought was very amusing and the overall use of text as dialogue was really amusing and it makes us have an idea of how the characters react with each other without speaking and it is just simply put well done as they manage to use the principle of less is more so i'm not going to mince words here the production and costumes of this zauberflöte were absolutely thrilling it was an overall grand visual feast a huge homage to silent films and of course the animation produced by Paul Barrett was amazing from beginning to end. Each detail was vivid, clear, and absolutely breathtaking. And now we get to the singers, starting off with Artamino Tanzel Aksaibek. And what more can I expect from this particular light lyric tenor? The lightness found in his voice was a great evidence he was able to sound young and fresh and he just had an overall pleasing tone yes i would have loved to have a slightly fuller voice a la fritz wunderlich but i still have to give tanzel achseibeck loads of kudos for everything he had to do with tamino he was able to use his youthful boyish and absolutely lovely light lyric tenor voice to the best of his abilities and his characterization was also on par with his fine singing he was able to do such a fine job not only characterizing pamino but also making him absolutely dashing and really quite the charmer as a character he was an elegant young gentleman in every single way dominic kuninger's papageno was charismatic and well focused all thanks to his clean and clear lyric baritone voice he had a certain charisma which made his characterization of papageno come to life he wasn't too clownish nor too monotone he was just right he was able to find some of the hilarious moments with papageno and he was also able to find certain facets about him which make him all the more human and speaking of papageno he also has a little black cat who follows him around which i presume is his pet or basically some cat who seems to follow papageno around i'll leave that up to interpretation but I'll go out of my way and say that it was his pet cat. And with Dominic Kuninger's performance as Papageno, he was an absolutely solid singing actor. He was able to use his clean, clear, well-focused, and lovely lyric baritone voice to the best of his abilities, and he was an overall dashing figure on stage. Nora Friedrichs was a solid queen of the night, and this was the first time I saw her live, and I thought that she did a very fine job. Yes, in the first act, she was kind of insecure on that high F, but in her second act, Aria, the Hölle Rache, I thought she was at her strongest but overall her characterization was properly cold and quite fierce and absolutely riveting the way she was able to make the queen of the night come to life with her menace and with her glares and just how she manages to not only stay immobile while having the animation of her spider legs and her skeletal figure do the work for her but overall she was absolutely in command theatrically but if you know me i always prefer a dramatic coloratura soprano singing the queen of the night voices like christina dotecom christiana eda pierre rita shane 
Eda Mulza, Ursula Kossuth, Sally Wolf, Kathleen Casello, Helen Kwan, Elena Moschuk, and Diana Dambrau, and even what we have today with the likes of Clara Kolonitz, Miriam Clark, Jessica Pratt, Mandy Friedrich, Albina Shagimuratova, Jana Shrema Kacirkova, and Catherine Lewick. Those are the type of voices I would associate with the Queen of the Night. In terms of Nora Friedrichs, she is basically a lyric coloratura soprano. However, this is not to deride her talents as a fine vocal actress. Regardless of the timbre of her voice and regardless of how it sounded, she still did a fine job. And she certainly has a lot of potential to sing a lot more bel canto and a lot more virtuosic roles like Lucia de la Marmur, Violetta from La Traviata, Gilda from Rigoletto, Constanza from Die Entführung aus dem Serheil, Amina from La Sonambula, Elvira from I Puritani, Marguerite de Valois from Les Huguenots, Isabelle from Robert le Diable, Berthe from Le Prophète, and maybe in 10 years' time, the likes of Antonia, after she graduates from singing Olympia, Luisa Miller, Maria Stuarda, and maybe even Anna Bolena. Who knows? The possibilities for this young, light lyric coloratura soprano are endless. She has a brilliant future ahead of her, and I would certainly love to see where her career will go. Equally as brilliant was Fira Lotta Böcker as Pamina, who I saw last year as La Princesse Eudoxie from Alevis La Juive. As to be expected, Miss Böcker's voice has that silvery quality which I love so much. It is clean and clear and absolutely gorgeous. Yes, her tone was rather sharp in the first act, but eventually she was able to tone down that sharpness and what blossomed was a voice which bloomed like a bouquet of roses and she was able to sing like a lovely lark. And her rendition of Ach ich Fuss was ideally poignant and I was quite heartbroken when she sang that aria. She was able to bring in a fair amount of pathos and she was able to be young and fresh all the way through, all thanks to her silvery lyric coloratura soprano voice. I can definitely see her in more roles like Manon from Massenet's Manon, Antonia from Le Comte d'Offman, Lucia Ashton from Lucia de la Mermour, Marie from La Fille du Regiment, Violetta Valéry from La Traviata, both Marguerite de Valois and Urbain from Les Huguenots, Berthe from Le Prophète, Lauretta from Janice Kiki, Liu from Turandot, and many other great roles for either a lyric coloratura soprano or a light lyric soprano. The possibilities for Fera Lotta Böcke are absolutely endless, and I cannot wait to see where her career will go because she has a brilliant, brightly toned, and absolutely lovely lyric coloratura soprano voice which is so ideal for all of these virtuosic parts, and she also has a great future ahead of her. Alma Zadeh was a charming papagena. She's extremely well known for singing all of these ingenue roles, whether it be Barbarina and Susanna from Nozze di Figaro, Serlina from Don Giovanni, and Musetta from La Boheme, there is no doubt that Miss Sade is very well known for all of these soubrettish and kittenish type of characters. She had a certain loveliness which made her stand out so well, and she was an overall endearing singing actress. With her light, lithe, and lovely physique, and her voice which had that lightness which I adore so much, I have to say that Alma Zadeh is definitely a singer I have to look out for more often. Jens Larsen was commanding as both Zarastro and the Speaker of the Temple. He was able to use his booming basso profondo voice for these two characters to the best of his abilities, and even though the Speaker was mainly an offstage role for him, 
he still managed to give a great amount of authority and a great amount of strength to this small yet important character. Yet as Arastro, I thought he was able to be in full command of that basso profondo voice. Yes, at times the vibrato can be quite loose in some areas, but it's still a commanding instrument which I adore so much. Emil Lavetsky was comically threatening as Monostatos, all thanks to his light lyric, well-focused, and clean tenor voice, he was able to make this character come to life. And he's also a great actor. The way he was able to make Monostatos gloriously hammy was very engaging and very inviting. And he just has this type of charisma which made him all the more wonderful as an overall singing actor. We also had such great singing from the three ladies done by Mirka Wagner, who was able to give the first lady her gorgeous, silvery, and lovely lyric soprano voice. Maria Fisilier, who was able to give the second lady her slightly smoky, yet well-focused lyric mezzo voice. And Karen van Oyen, who was able to do a fine and fabulous job with the third lady, all thanks to her rich contralto voice. And of course, the two armed men, who were done by Christoph Spett, all thanks to his firm-toned lyric tenor voice, and Samuel Taskinen, who had a firmly toned and absolutely plush bass baritone voice, and of course the angelic singing of the three boys who were performed by the members of the Tolza Zenger Knaben, and those were Maximilian Leicher, Jovek Wolf, and Jonathan Klaas. So overall, the singing was absolutely fabulous from beginning to end. Everyone went together and it was a fine collaborative effort, not only from the leads, but also from the supporting players. The conducting done by Jordan de Souza was absolutely solid. Yes, there were times in which he, the orchestra, and the singers couldn't really collaborate, and there were times their focus kind of wavered here and there, but I still thought he did a great job with the tempi. It was ideally brisk, and at the same time, it gave a great amount of energy to each moment, whether it be the overture, or the Queen of the Night's two arias, or even that of the Papagena Papagena duet. Each moment that he managed to do, he did very well. Yes, there were some reservations, but I still had to give credit to Mr. D'Souza for leading the orchestra of the Komische Oper Berlin. And of course, the chorus and orchestra were absolutely fabulous from beginning to end. So overall, with a greatly innovative production, complete with mesmerizing visuals, and of course, singers who managed to do very fine jobs on their parts and equally fine conducting by Maestro Jordan de Souza. This was a production of the Zauberflöte that no one should dare miss, especially when you have such a solid cast. And for those of you who caught this particular production of the Zauberflöte at the Komische Oper Berlin, what did you think of it? Did you really love the production because of how innovative it is and because of its great and absolutely mesmerizing visuals? Was there a singer who stood out to you so much? Or do you feel like there was something or someone that just didn't really hold up? Comment below and let me know. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to tune in on Wednesday where I review Puccini's La Boheme starring Elena Guseva as Mimi at the Deutsche Oper Berlin. So until then, good night everybody and happy holidays.